In this fourth video for our second lesson on indirect tax, we're going to start looking at how we can evaluate indirect taxes. This is really just a video outlining some of the, the key points. You will probably want to make your own notes as we go through. So let's start with a few more key definitions. Now you might have met these in your macroeconomics, but we're gonna take a look at them here. They're entirely relevant. And the three terms we're going to look at are on the screen there for you. Progressive tax, regressive tax, and proportional tax. A progressive tax is one that takes a higher proportion of income as income rises. And we have an example there about UK income tax. You might just want to take the time to pause and read through the detail there. Remember, examples and evidence are really, really important in your A-level economics exams. A regressive tax is one that takes a higher proportion of income as income falls. And a good example would be VAT. Typically, all indirect taxes are regressive taxes. So the example we've got there is that if someone is earning £50,000 a year and they pay £2,500 per year on tax associated with, say, alcohol and cigarettes, that is 5% of their income. However, if someone who earns just £25,000 per year also pays the same amount in tax because they buy the same amount of alcohol and cigarettes, that would actually be 10% of their income. So you can see there that VAT and indirect taxes are a bigger burden on those with low income. Proportional taxes are more unusual. We tend to see them less. And these are taxes that say, take exactly the same proportion of income from people regardless of their level of income. Uh, one example that I've just jotted down there is that some US states have a proportional income tax on their citizens. So regardless of your level of income, you pay exactly the same rate of income tax. Now, some key general points with evaluating indirect taxes, and there is uh, space on your uh, downloadable worksheet to jot these in if you want to. Alternatively, just add them to your own notes. And the first one there is actually how difficult it is to set the right tax rate. And we touched on this a little bit back in online lesson one. In theory, we can set an indirect tax to exactly equal the external cost associated with a particular market failure. And in theory, that therefore allows our socially optimal quantity to be achieved. Now, if you just stop to think about, in a sense, how, how daft that is really, um, it's so difficult in reality to put a precise figure or value on our externalities. Sometimes they occur in the future and it's very difficult to think about costs in the future and how we quantify them today. Some of them, there is just no price for them because there is no market. How do you, for example, put a price on the loss of a beautiful view um, or the impact of pollution? So it's really difficult in reality to set the right rate of tax so that a market failure is definitely and completely corrected. Our second point there is the cost of collection. Sometimes taxes can be very difficult to collect or expensive to collect. If that's the case, it may simply not be worth imposing it because the cost of collection could just be greater than the amount of tax revenue received. Finally, thinking about PED, price elasticity of demand, this really follows on from what we've just been looking at in terms of elasticity and incidence. So when you have fairly price inelastic demand, um, and think about all of those examples we've looked at so far in terms of petrol, um, cigarettes, alcohol, uh, they do tend to have fairly price inelastic demand. So even a very large tax will actually have minimal effect on the quantity demanded. Now you could be cynical and say, well, actually that doesn't really matter because actually what the government wants is really high tax revenue, which they will certainly get unless behaviors change. So those are three key evaluation points when we're thinking about indirect taxes. Now it's really important at this point for me to um, note that whenever you are writing about an indirect tax in an exam, it's usually in relation to a specific market, so a specific good or service. And when that's the case, you really have to apply your evaluation points to that market. 
And we'll look a little bit in our next uh, online activity for this lesson, uh, exactly how to do that. On the screen there, uh, again, you might just want to pause at this point and take a moment to read through those additional considerations when we're evaluating the effect of indirect taxes. So the top one there, we really need to think about unintended consequences. So for example, as taxes have risen on cigarettes and tobacco in the UK, there has been much more incentive to smuggle those items into the country. And that obviously incurs a cost in terms of police time and customs time, um, the legal system and, and the cost there as people carry out more and more illegal activity. Um, and furthermore, with that one, the quality of cigarettes and tobacco imported into the UK in an attempt to avoid paying that tax, um, you know, that they, they might be much more dangerous for health, potentially fewer filters on them. And we just don't necessarily know what the cigarettes and tobacco has uh, has been cut with. Uh, the second point there, actually, how much tax revenue do we raise and how is it used? Uh, it's quite useful to think about whether the tax revenue can be hypothecated. So, for example, the revenue from the London congestion charge goes back into funding transport for London's public transport system. So you're taxing the behaviour you don't want, which is individual car use, and you are using it to uh, subsidise and make more um, accessible the behaviour that you do want, which is use of public transport. Similarly, the sugar tax, the revenue raised from that goes towards, in theory, supporting children's activities at primary school. So sporting and exercise activities. We might also want to think uh, perhaps slightly more uh, macroeconomic, in, in more macroeconomic terms, thinking about the impact on businesses and competitiveness. If you um, if you impose a tax, could it lead to significant job losses? That was certainly the case when the plastic bag charge was introduced in the UK. Lots of packaging and plastic bag manufacturers really struggled. There was simply no demand for their products anymore. And that means that people lose their jobs. The extent to which that's important probably depends on the size of the industry. And you could also think more broadly about competitiveness and trade. And then down at the bottom there, picking up on those key terms from the start of this activity, uh, some people uh, might be hit more, uh, more aggressively by a tax. So some taxes can have very regressive effects on low income families. So most indirect taxes, as we've already looked at, will um, have a bigger effect on low income people and that can worsen inequalities within an economy. So just some key points there. Do jot down the ones that you think would be most useful to you for your notes.